Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, gonna go over the games from the NHL games from January not January, well, February first, twenty twenty one. Alright. Let's begin with the Pittsburgh Penguins versus the New York Rangers. This one the Rangers won three to one. The scoring began nine oh five into the first. Jason Zucker for Pittsburgh got his third of the year from Chad Ru uh, Ruedel and Evgeny Malkin. 20 minutes in of the first, so at the after the buzzer, Kasperi Kapanen and Brett Howden of the Rangers had a fight. Now, Kapanen I would not have expected. Howden I wouldn't have either, but he's a little bit bigger, so it's kind of surprising. But still, it happened, so go check it out if you want to. Look it up on HockeyFights.com or one of the sites like that, and you'll find it. Or just look it up on YouTube, you can find it there too. All right, 17:42 into second. Kevin Rooney scores his second of the year from Artemi Panarin and Ryan Lindgren. Then in the third period, 11:10 in, Chris Kreider gets his fourth to put the Rangers up 2-1 on the power play from Adam Fox and Artemi Panarin. Then they add an empty net goal with one second left in the game. Artemi Panarin's fifth from Ryan Strom. Other news for the Rangers today: Anthony D'Angelo has played his last game as a Ranger, according to their GM. And he cleared waivers today, so now I guess they're working with his agent and allowing them to talk to other teams that may possibly be interested in a trade. We'll see how this works out. I have a feeling at the point at this point, with all the problems he's had, I don't think anybody's going to take him. I mean, without absolutely robbing the Rangers. I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they trade him for a seventh round pick. I mean, if that even. Trade him for like a bag of pucks. Here you go. Take this 4.8 million and his problems, and here you go. So that's how they are right now with that. But at least he's on the team, and they seem to respond better today. So hopefully that helps them out, and we'll see how that goes from here. All right, the Penguins outshot the Rangers 26-24. Faceoffs, the Rangers were murdered in the faceoff dot today, 71 to 29 percent. Yikes. Penguins were murdered on the power play because they were 0 for 6. And the Rangers were 1 for 4 on the power play. Penalty minutes were 17 13, Rangers with 17. Hits 26 25, Rangers with 26. Blocks 20, 20 to 13, Rangers with 20. And both teams had 8 giveaways. Casey DeSmith for the Penguins 21 saves, 913 save percentage on a loss. And Shister Igor Shisterkin had. 25 saves for 962 save percentage for the win. And he is also the first star with 25 for 26 on the saves the shots against and 962 save percentage. Artemi Panarin, a goal and two assists, plus one, and 1937 a time on ice. Adam Fox had an assist and plus one and 2603 a time on ice to be your third star. Alright, next is Boston versus Washington. Game two of this matchup. Scoring began 13-26 into the first. Zidane Chara got his second from Garnett Hathaway and Nick Dowd. Then, 11 seconds later, Daniel Sprong scored his second from Jakob Vrana and Nick Jensen. This point, 2-0 at the end of the first. Third period, 8-35 in. John Carlson's fourth on the power play from Jakob Vrana. This point, Capitals are up 3-0. Yikes. That hurts. But Boston starts the comeback. 12.37, so about four minutes and two seconds after the third Washington goal. David Pasternak gets his first of the year from Brad Marchand and Brandon Carlo. Then in the third period, six minutes, eight seconds in, David Pasternak gets his second from Jakob Zobril and Charlie McAvoy to make a one-goal game. 13.07, Craig Smith's third from Jeremy Lozon and Nick Ritchie to tie the game. At 1723, Brandon Carlos second from Sean Curley, Curley or Curley, and Chris Wagner to take the lead. That would end up being the game-winning goal right there. But the Bruins would add one more. Brad Marchand sixth from David Krejci. I forgot to mention 849 of the third. Trent Frederick fought Tom Wilson. I have yet to find the video on this one, but I haven't looked very hard because I've been busy getting my daughter to go to sleep. So. I've not gotten a chance to catch the video of that one yet. I do want to see that one. That one seems like an interesting fight. 
But this one, the final, Bruins 5, Capitals 3. And the Bruins outshot the Capitals 33-26. Faceoffs were even 50% each. Boston 0 for 4 on the power play. Washington 1 for 4. Penalty minutes 13 each. Hits 27 Boston, 17 Washington. Blocks 19-8 Washington with 19. Giveaways 11-2 Washington with 11. Yaroslav Halak had 23 saves and an 8.85 save percentage for the win. And Vanacek had 28 saves, 8.75 save percentage for the loss. Honestly, I think that's probably the worst game Vanacek's had so far this year, which is pretty saying a lot. Because <laughs> this is a team that was missing four core players for their for about five game span. All right, David Pasternak had two goals, plus one, and 20 minutes of time on ice via the first star. Second star, Brandon Carlo, one goal, one assist, plus two, and 19-16 in time on ice. Third star, Yakov Rana, two assists, even, and 13-26 in time on ice. Good to see Posture not getting the goals in there because I know he he had that hip surgery, so it's good to see him back and scoring some goals. Alright, on to Nashville versus Tampa. Tampa will pull out the win, 5-2. Scoring went like this. 9-13 into the first, Andre Palat's fourth from Steven Stamkos and Jan Ruda. 13-29, Yanni Gord's second from Tyler Johnson and Anthony Sorelli. Then with one second left in the period, Braden points third from Matthew Joseph and Pat Maroon. And look that video up of that goal. It was a very good goal. And I still, at this point, am perplexed how it happened before the 20-minute mark. But they reviewed it. It did. So it's a goal. But at that point, it's 3-0. Second period, Steven Stamkos advances that lead at 7:23. His fourth of the year. Ironically, a fourth goal of the game, too. Not his fourth goal, but the team's fourth goal. Power play from Victor Hedman and Alex Kalorn. Nashville starts trying to come back at this point. Third period, 2.53 in. Eli Tolvanen scores his first of the year from Eric Halla. Then at 5.41, Michael Granlin makes it a two-goal game at that point. It's third of the year from Ryan Ellis and Roman Yossi. But their comeback would be short-lived because they would not be able to come back. Third period, 1944, Yanni Gore scores an empty nair, third of the year from Barkley Goodrow. This game did not have the fireworks the first game had, amazingly. I think everybody was expecting a lot. I, I didn't see much of anything. There were some scrums, but nothing like last game. Shots on goal, 28-26 in favor of Nashville. Faceoffs, 55-45 in favor of Nashville. Power play, 0-3 for, for Nashville, 1-4 for, for Tampa. Penalty minutes, 8-6, Nashville with 8. Hits 19-18, Nashville with 19. Blocks 9 each. And giveaways 3-2, Nashville with 3. Juicy Saros had 21 saves for 8.40 save percentage in the loss. And Vasilevsky had 26 saves, 9.29 save percentage for the win. Ryan McDonough is the first star. I have no idea why when he provided nothing offensively. But it's all in my opinion. He probably had a heck of a defensive game. So maybe that's why he was, but he was even in 19-12 with time on ice. Yanni Gord, two goals, plus two, 14-16 at time on ice. And Andre Vasilevsky, 26 for 28 on the save shots against, and a 9.29 save percentage. Alright, on to Vancouver versus Montreal. Montreal still the top team in the north, and they continue to be with the 6-2 win over Vancouver. One minute into the first period. Nick Suzuki starts the scoring with his third of the year from Josh Anderson and Jonathan Druan. 6-10 into the first, Arturi Lekkanen's second of the year on the shorthand, a shorthanded goal. Then Vancouver tried to come back at that point, made it 2-1. 8-36 in the first, Adam got at second, unassisted. Then at 16-58, Jeff Petrie restores the two-goal lead with his third of the year from Paul Byron and Arturi Lekkanen. Second period, 7.15 in, Brendan Gallagher's fourth from Nick Suzuki. 8.40 into the second, Jeff Petrie's fourth, it's second of the game, from Corey Perry and just Barry Cock... I always mess up his name, Kakaniemi. Then at 17.11, Tyler Toffoli's seventh on the power play from Shea Weber and Jeff Petrie. And then third period, Vancouver scores one, 
Jay Beagle, 1149 in, his first year from Tyler Mott and Alex Edler. I guess just mess with Carey Price's night, I guess was pretty much what that goal was about. Shots on goal, 40-29 in favor of Montreal. Faceoffs, 51-49 in favor of Montreal. Power play, 0 for 3 for Vancouver, 1 for 3 for Montreal. Six penalty minutes each. 30-26 to 26 is the hits in favor of Vancouver. 13-9, the blocks in favor of Montreal. 19-11, the, the giveaways with Montreal with 19. They need to clean that up if they want to keep being that top team. They clean that up, they'll be dang near possible to beat. Barring injuries, of course, hopefully they get none. Goalies, Brandon Holtby had, Brandon Holtby had 34 saves, 850 save percentage in the loss, and Carey Price, 27 saves, 931 save percentage in the win. Jeff Petrie's your first star. Two goals, one assist, plus three in 20 minutes, 25 seconds of time on ice. Second star, Nick Suzuki. One goal, one assist, plus two and 18.31 time on ice. Arturi Lekkanen, one goal, one assist, plus two and 13.39 time on ice. So I just want to touch on Montreal. At this point, they are the top team in the North. And honestly, they look like the best team in the league at this point. I expected them to show an improvement at their playoff appearance last year. But dang, I don't think anybody saw them being this dominant. Hey, they've been very dominant so far. They lost the one game to Calgary. They were shut out 2-0. Honestly, really, it was a 1-0 then an empty netter. But still, they lost that one. That's the only one I can recall. Oh, and that Washington loss was their first regulation loss of the season, by the way. I forgot to mention that earlier. Calgary versus Winnipeg. Last game of the night. Calgary wins this one in shootout, 4-3. Alright, the scoring began 4-31 into the first. Kyle Connors fifth on the power play from Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler. 13-46 into the first. Kyle Connors second of the game, sixth of the year. Another power play goal from Josh Morrissey and Blake Wheeler. A lot of controversy surrounding Blake Wheeler right now and Mark Shifley. We'll, we'll see how that all works out. I don't think it's going to affect the team now that Line A's gone, but I don't know if you heard, supposedly Line A said that it was Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley messing with him as to why he wanted to get out of that team, so I don't think it affects the rest of the team, honestly. I really don't, so we'll see how they react once Dubois starts playing for him. And also how Columbus reacts once Line A starts playing. And how Line A responds to criticism from his new coach. Good luck with John Tortorella there, Line A. Luckily, he's friends with the GM. Maybe that might help him a little. Anyways, second period. Seven seconds in. Christopher Tanev's first from Elias Lindholm. That starts the comeback for Calgary. It's 2-1 at that point. 6.54 into the third. Johnny Goudreau ties the game with his sixth of the year. From, I forgot A in that name. Ooh. Yeah, watch out for that. From Yuso Valamaki and Elias Lindholm. Then at 13.45, Calgary takes the 3-2 lead. And Drew Maggiopani. I like saying his name. His name is fun. First of the year from Noah Hannafin and Matthew Kachuk. No one ever said his name much. First goal of the year. The 18-10, Winnipeg ties it. Mark Shifley's four for Neil Pionk and Blake Wheeler. Then in the shootout, Johnny Goudreau scores the second Calgary goal of the shootout for the shootout winning goal. So Johnny Goudreau starting to wake up. Calgary fans are probably going, yay, finally. It's been a while. Yes, it has been. At least it feels like because last year I know he had points, but it just felt like he was non-existent most of the season last year. I don't know if that's just from an outsider looking in. Let me know, Calgary fans, but... To me, it felt like he was more invisible last year. This year, I've seen him a lot more, especially in last week. So, hopefully, he can keep that up. Alright, stats. 28-28 were the shots on goal, even. Even in the faceoff, 50-50. Power play, 0 for 2 for Calgary, 2 for 4 for Winnipeg. Penalty minutes, 8 to 4, Calgary with 8. Hits, 17-15 in favor of Winnipeg. Blocks, 13-12 in favor of Calgary. And even on the giveaways, 10 each. Goalies, Markstrom had 25 saves, 893 save percentage in the win. And Connor Hellbeck, 25 saves, 893 save percentage for a loss. Yes, you see that correctly. Hellbeck and Markstrom had the same amount of saves, same save percentage. I don't know how many times that actually happens in the 
in the NHL, but that is a rarity. At least it feels like it's a rarity. Because the shootout winning goal does not count against the save percentage or the saves. So they had the exact same amount of saves and same exact save percentage. That's fun. I like seeing that. All right, Kyle Connor was your first star. Two goals, minus one, and 22-16 at time on ice. Christopher Tanev had one goal, plus two, and 21-05 at time on ice. And Blake Wheeler, three assists, minus one, and 19-47 at time on ice. All right, that's it for this video. All right, I hope you all enjoy. Um, other than that, make sure to like, comment, share. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already. And if you are a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. And if you're watching this, subscriber or not, thank you for watching. I will see you all next video. And make sure to let me know what you think of your team's performance so far in the comments. Because I'd like to hear it. So I will talk to you all there. Bye everybody.